this is insane. So you're just going to keep going until what? Until I get- You a, hook up I, with somebody there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> until I meet my wife or I get arrested. Welcome to Man of the Year. I'm Matt Ritter. I'm Aaron Cairo. Champions of friendship, baby. And uh, Matt and I are part of a group of nine friends. We've been friends since childhood. Every year on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, we gather at Peter Luger Steakhouse in Brooklyn, and we give out the Man of the Year trophy, which is sitting between us in the studio right now, to whichever mm-hmm. friend had the best year. It's fully subjective. It doesn't have to be any objective criteria. We argue about it. Very competitive group. You could have a kid. You can make a lot of money. Doesn't matter. You just have to. Prove to your eight other closest friends that you had the best year in life. So we thought we would talk about this episode, how to make new friends. Not easy. And this is something- I'm, I'm a very social guy. It's not easy. Do something that you already like doing. Okay, so for me, I'm a gym rat. Um, Matt, you may or may not know that I recently joined an all-female gym. One of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. It's one of the things that we talk about on our text chain all the time. It feels illegal, but is it? So I was- <laughs> Shouldn't it be? <laughs> I just I can't believe this is real. I was walking through the neighborhood and I saw a new fitness studio had opened up a few blocks from me. And you know, when I see a gym, I walk in. That's my thing. If I see a new gym, I walk in, feel comfortable. So I walk into in this fitness studio and this woman's like, oh, would you like a tour? I'm like, sure. They're in between classes, nobody else there. Beautiful fitness space, mirrors, there's a balcony. And she's like, we're low impact. And we have proprietary equipment. Would you like to do a trial, three classes, three classes for 30 bucks over the next seven days? I'm like, sure, I'll try a new. So that's me, growth mindset. I was like, sure, I'll try a new random ass gym. And I show up the next day and there's 20 women and myself. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. We are doing this, um, we're, doing a, we're doing a lot of like, you know, when you jump and you then you, and you, you know, kind of like Jane Fonda stuff. Uh, Everybody line up for their Kegels. One pound weights only. And then the proprietary equipment was like a, like a big kind of stress ball that you stick between your legs, you wear, you wear it between your legs. And I'm just doing little motions. Hardest workout I've ever done in my life. Harder than CrossFit, I'm fucking dying. But I'm like, okay, there's 20 women here. That's cool. I'm gonna, I still got my trial. Come the next time, another 20 women. Meanwhile, my pelvic floor has never been stronger. And um, finally, after this, class, I asked someone, I'm like, oh, is this an all female? Like, what's going on? And she's like, no, yeah. Like, no, it's like mostly Because they're not allowed legally. The website says for women by women. Oh. (laughs) But they said, no, there's a couple guys. You know, I'm like, okay, third class, I'm fucking, it's rain. I'm I'm fucking doing it. Fourth class, there's another guy. And You're, this, you, this is a movie. And he's me a week ago. He just randomly walked in. And he's this doing is his soul, trial class. This is like Soul Man, but for a woman's gym. This is the, but listen to this. Listen to what this guy did, okay? He took off his shirt. Okay? That's a line cross. Now, that is like a kind of a CrossFit thing. You take your shirt off. This is a little women's fitness studio. It wasn't like he was buff. And all of a sudden- an Oh, F- if he was buff, it would have been- Well, you know, I, at least I sort of get it. You know, I get it. And I'm with the girls, like looking at him, like, mm-hmm, like what's, what is this guy oh, doing? Awesome. Yeah. So that's my new female gym. You don't evolve, we pee evolve. Um, but Hold like, on. This is your new gym, so you're, you're, you're still- You know, I, I pop in when I want a little dose of- And you're sure that you're welcome there? I'm not, I'm not unwelcome. <laughs> I'm not unwelcome. You're so unwelcome. Well, no, everyone leaves immediately at the end of the class. Is that how classes, because I've only done CrossFit where you stay for an hour and talk about your day. Yeah. Do other fitness classes, do you A lot leave? of them do. A lot of them do. Yeah? What about you guys? You leave? Soul Cycle. A lot of them, you just bounce. But right. yeah, some people hang out outside the studio, right. not in the studio. Because right. it's too small and there's another class. Okay, so that's one. Let me give you another example, okay? This is, this no, is, no, no, I want to get, we're not yeah, done oh, with the yeah, one's yeah. gym. Yeah. We're not, we can't just be done with the fact that you illegally joined and all you you broke. Well, it's not illegal because they now aren't. They're not allowed to discriminate on the. Basis. But you're a lawyer. Yeah, that's why it's it's. They're not allowed to discriminate on the basis of sex. Maybe, um, but it's assumed by 
for women by women that you are not welcome. I mean, you're, you got seven, was it 770 on your English SAT? 770 split, 1540 yeah. total. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, somewhere inside of you that this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. So you're just going to keep going until what? Until I get you a, hook up I, with somebody. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> until I meet my wife or I get arrested. That was only two options. But anyway, let's move yes. on from that. I, I just want to tell you one other thing I, I've been doing recently, which is I was at a bar in Marina del Rey, which is pretty far from where I live. And all of a sudden, like 200 really sweaty people came in yeah. wearing like spandex yeah. and started ordering booze. And I'm like, who are you? They're like, we're the Venice Run Club. Okay. So basically this organization, every Wednesday night, they meet. And they run five miles throughout Venice. You can go as fast or slow as you want. And they go to a bar after. And I'm like, well, this is my crowd. And so I've been doing Venice Rocco's 400 people running together. It's like the most social thing I've ever done. People are introducing themselves. This I like for you. Yes. Now it's a little young. Better than it being criminally all women and you commit. Criminally illegal. Yeah. yeah. This is better for you. Yeah. But it's like, I, can I relate to a 22 year old guy? Emotionally? Yeah. Fair. <laughs> Fair. But. You mean like what music they're into or what are they talking about? What are they do? You watch TV? Honestly, I'm, I'm more with it than the Gen Z. Yeah. You do, not, I'm like, yeah, you see that TikTok? Yeah, like, you know what's I, going on. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I like this for you. I, I see this for you. But we've all at different times in our lives, you know, had trouble making friends. I had trouble making friends when I first moved to LA. Um, and so we thought we'd be talking about some best practices. Yeah. I, I find as a married guy now, like it's harder to make friends. Like you're married. That's your unit. Yeah. And it's hard to like go, okay, what, what's my own identity even? There's, there's that stuff when you're married. Like, it's not easy. Well, we're also, we're old. We're 43. We're old, yeah. Yeah. But it's not easy at any age. Yeah. And so- Unless you're like a child whose parents make them- Well, play, play date. If, if we could still get play dates, that's not a bad oh, idea. that's such a good idea. How would that work? Uh, there's a, um, we start a website called Play Dates and, no, we, and then we become billionaires and then we don't have to do this podcast anymore. But I literally want my, I don't mean a website. I mean, my, I want my parents. Oh, to yeah, that's uh, like matchmaking for friends. You mean like as right. adults? Right. Because parents still matchmake. But what do you think a play date would look like? I think for you, it would be going to the gym, followed by some sort of uh, beer thing on the beach. What would mine be? This is a play date? Yeah. <sighs> uh, it would probably be like doing like some yard work and then uh, reading a book. I'd love that side by side with another guy. Yeah. <laughs> we just yard working and reading books. Just talking about mulch. Oh God, that would be my, actually I have a neighbor. We essentially do that. Oh yeah. So you made a new friend. That's your most friend, recent my neighbor. Friend. Yeah. But that's like, I had to pay a lot of money for that friend. Right. I had to buy my way into Hancock park to make one new friend. That's a costly. If we're talking about CPM or whatever the number yeah. the cost per acquisition, that's a high, high cost of acquisition. And, and that's a friend where you can't ever sort of, Lose that friend unless he moves. You got to keep things on the on the level. If your if your forthcoming child throws his or her ball, over oh, the I fence. have a forthcoming child. I should say, yeah, congratulations. On the way, thank you, thank Mazel you. Mazel tov. Yeah, our children have to be right. friends too. Imagine your kid throws a ball, it breaks the guy's window. Friendship. Over. I think it's probably the other way around. That's he'll probably he's probably going to throw a ball himself through my window. Cool. I see. Well, I see a big big ball player. No, he just likes drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on that note I, I think like the most important thing to think about when making new friends or trying to make new friends is it's a numbers game similar to dating as we know i'm single it's literally about meeting as many people as possible and it's not even about like i'm going to meet people to make friends it's just meeting people yeah. anybody yeah. because those people know other people and you end up, and, and, and Matt, we've talked about this, I call it surface area. Yeah. What do you call it? I say putting yourself in the position. Putting yourself in the which is that like, if you're out and about in the world, yeah. then, then you never know what's going to happen. You never who the person you're going to meet is. Like, if you get your groceries at the store, instead of like ordering them like we've been doing for a while, then you bump into something. That sounds like a John Cusack rom-com, but maybe. Yeah. It's called, maybe. It's called Fresh Direct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fresh Direct. That's right. That's, that's the title that's of the, the movie. That's the title. It, it's, it's starring John Cusack and I want to say. I feel like it's, um, it's like Khaleesi and she's the checkout girl. She's playing the checkout girl. Oh, so it's not meeting a, a, a woman in the aisle. It's meeting the checkout Exactly. Because you never know. That's the exposure. That's putting yourself in wow. a position. I just would assume that you meant let's go bump into somebody in the aisle. Well, you never know. That's the thing. It could be the butcher. My dad is friends with the fishmonger. 
It's what you're supposed that, to do. Is that a word? Yeah. Yeah. He goes, you're oh. supposed to be friends with a fishmonger as an adult. So, so John Cusa comes in, Khaleesi, God, what's her name? Emily Clark. Emily, Emily Clark. Clark. Amelia Clark. She's, uh, here's what happened. She's work. She's working the checkout. He's short. Oh, he's okay. short. Okay. So she slides one tuna over. Uh, she doesn't, she doesn't even say anything. She just slides oh, it. Oh, that's a fuck. Oh, I just got chills. Yeah. And nothing is said, but then he comes back. Or she's like, would you like your receipt? Yeah. Scribble, oh, scribble. Yeah. And, and then ultimately yeah, she ends up filing a restraining order again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It took a dark turn. It took a dark, like well, this guy keeps showing. He's yeah. He keeps my- showing up. Cause I gave him one tuna. Yeah. He's screaming like, it was too friendly. Yeah. He, yeah. Pulled, he pulls up a, a little, a little iPhone now. Cause he doesn't need the boom box anymore. He's got oh, a little, yeah. yeah. He's got the iPhone 14 and he's playing it. He thinks it's loud, but it's yeah. not that loud because the grocery yeah. store has its own music. Oh, he's doing it. The, I think he follows her home. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's throwing cans of tuna. Yeah, yeah, window. He breaks a window. Yeah, like, what, John, what are you he's doing like, Remember here? the tuna? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, friendship. So, um, I was starting to say exposure. Oh, another thing is, you know, in our business, obviously in many businesses, all our meetings became virtual yeah. and I have just started to be like, Hey, let's get coffee. Let's do whatever, like really not forcing the issue, but like making a concerted effort, not because that person is going to be my friend or my new girlfriend or whatever, because you're out, you're, 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 you're your surface area. Yeah. You're also a human. It just puts you in the rhythm of being a human being. Right. But I think that's one thing that we've, we, we've, you know me, I was already agoraphobic before. Yeah. The this pandemic. guy, by the way, this is a guy who spent five years locked in. Yes. Oh God. It was the best five years of my life. Yeah. It was great. I invented ordering toilet paper. I mean. We like to say that this pandemic kind of like proved you right or you were vindicated. I had, horophobes were vindicated. Dude, I had Purell. When everyone made a run for Purell, I was like, oh, I got plenty. It. I got plenty. No, actually, I didn't go to the store. I went to his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing I would say is that we're not trying to make friends. You're going out. You're literally living your life. You're, you're living your life. I think that's the key. It's like you're not going to the grocery store to make friends. You're not going to some event to make friends. You're just going to live your I'll, life. I'll tell you what I did to change it up. Because I was working from home for a long time in Hollywood, you're a screenwriter, you're writing from your house. And I was just like, I'm, I'm lonely. I'm not trying to make a friend, but I'm also. And you live with your wife, which is crazy. Yeah. But we both have therapists and you know, your therapist is like, you can't have, you know, you have these hours, she's busy working. You can't just like have these hours where you're feeling depressed Yeah, because you don't have anybody around, like change it up. She's like, can't you go to a coffee shop? I'm like, I don't want to be a coffee shop guy anymore. So I ended up joining WeWork. Okay. That was like five years ago. Immediately, like, wasn't trying to make friends, but like everybody was in the same boat. You could tell everybody's going through the same stuff. Did you lock eyes and be like, oh shit, like this person, he's also, he's also lonely. Oh, so it was like, yeah, there was a guy who was like, you want to get a coffee? <laughs> right. I'd love to. You no, know, but I met a lot of people there. And then I, um, and then I went to Noya House. Um, after that, I worked at Noya House for a while. That's a fancy we were. It's a fancier one because it was more entertainment people. I was like, actually, I want to meet more people that are kind of within my biz. Wasn't trying to make friends then either, but it, to your point, ended up with people that are still my friend, like to this day are my friends. Well, how do you know that person? From we were from Noya House. Proving your point. Another thing I think is a good place to meet people, alumni events. That's how you met your Listen, wife. I went to Penn. Yes, Penn Law. Penn, Penn Law, the one that's harder to get into. You have to take a much harder test, the LSAT. It's not like the SATs. This is a test that requires like re- real studying. I mean, is, is there anyone out there in our audience that thinks it's harder to get in or is more impressive to go to an undergrad Ivy League school than a law school? I would like to know. Let's take a vote. We'll, we'll put up a poll. This is going to be the we'll worst vote. poll, the most narrow audience ever. It's a very elitist, but it's, it's an elitist question. Also, I want to know if anybody out there actually got a worse score on their SATs than their PSATs. Which like is this what, guy. Which yeah, is went down a few points. Yeah. Uh, fair, 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 fair. So I did, I did meet my wife at an alumni event. She was running the Young Alumni Club, which I was pushing. Barely an alumni, definitely not young. And I was definitely not young alumni mean, in the way that you're not a woman. I'm not a young alumni. Yeah, yeah. In a, in, a, in a way- You identify as young. Yeah, I identify as young the way you are a P-Vol. Don't, don't talk shit about my ladies. The way you're, so in, the, in that very same way, I was stretching it by going to a young alumni undergrad pen event. So I went to the event. My, my, then, my then nothing, my now wife, was running the event and didn't really have time to talk to me. I tried to talk to her for like two seconds. Ignored me. 
So then I just started showing up at like every young alumni event until eventually she agreed to go out with me. So it was a straight up stock job. I mean, this is literally the plot of the movie that we just pitched before. Yeah, and it ended up in marriage. I don't want you to cut just this sentence, but some stalking works out okay. I, I would say 25%. 25% well, of stalking? My marriage was because of a stock. So I feel do you know really any good other good it. stock jobs? All right, I want to, I want to 10%. 10%, 10%. Yeah, I just don't want to feel like, oh, I'm the only, you know, because a stalker, I want, I want there to be other normal stalkers. I don't know what the rules are for stalking even. Anyway, oh, our next topic. Whoa, uh, what about a friend? What about you're trying to make a friend? Well, we only discussed, you don't want to try I know, but, at all. Okay, but like you're saying go to places. What if you know your potential friend's going to be somewhere? Is that a stalk? I mean, I've definitely done some like social media due diligence and be like, wait, I don't know if I know this from social media or from talking to them. It's definitely from social media. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely from the check-in they made on Foursquare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Foursquare, wherever you are. Um, Just defunct. S- stalking... You know, listen, I have a great stalking story. My, one of my writing partners, one of my best friends, she stalked me. A lot of people email stalk you into friendship. Yes. I'm very susceptible to email stalking. And here you are saying poo-pooing it, and it turns out yeah. two of your closest friends in LA stalked you. Am I wrong? That's, that's pretty accurate. I feel like I've, I'm shooketh. Yeah. So, But you're talking about IRL stalking. Oh, I'm old school. I don't... <laughs> you're in the bushes. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a couple other things I, I thought have been very helpful... One is from a, another podcast, which I can't remember where it was from. So if it was you, please let us know. And this guy was saying, instead of trying to like get friends, you should try to be the friend. I think we both live that. Yeah. So like, instead of like hoping people will plan stuff and call you and do whatever, like you're more proactive in planning stuff and having stuff going on. I'm like, oh, I'm doing this. Come. I'm always like, um, and like I always have like extra tickets to things and I try to like expand my circle that way. Yeah. Like sometimes like I'll have a ticket for a concert and like whatever, you can't go. And I'll just like throw it out to somebody that I'm like cusp friends with to cement it. You know what I mean? Or like a, a, a baseball game or something. But I like that. I like that. It's like, if you're the center, like people will be drawn to that. You know, if you're like, oh, he goes out and he plans things. He does fun things. It's like, oh, you always know there's going to be fun thing happening at Matt's house. Or, you know, oh, Cairo's planning a weekend pub crawl or Cairo's doing a, you know, you got me out to, um, what was that concert thing? Which I don't usually go to. Um, hard fest. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just, which is a, basically a very aggressive, uh, Theo's laughing, a very aggressive for young, it's for young. Yeah. But I like, I, I was, yeah. you know, I was just like, yeah. Cause I knew you were with people that I like. Yeah. And I was like, then we meet people. You never know who you're going to meet. No, but I liked your friends too that aren't like, I'm not that close with, but it was like, oh yeah, I like those people. And that's, well, yeah. Most of my friends are now your friends. I just asked my wife just now. I, I said, Cairo told me there's a party tonight. Are, yeah. are we invited? She goes, we're going to the party. Tonight. Yeah. Oh, she's coming? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, so yes, fine. Uh, that was a joke, by the way. We want Jess to come. Yes, we do want her to come. Yeah. I want her to But come. she can't drink because she's pregnant. So what's she going to, oh, she can drive us. We need a driver. We need a driver. Do you want some random Uber guy or my wife who's a very responsible driver? Hi. <laughs> Great Parker. Great yeah. parallel Parker. Oh, God, I'm the worst. Oh, she's the best at it. That's the worst part about dating in LA. I don't think people understand this. You're picking someone up, a stranger. I mean, maybe not on the first date. And then you're going to a place. And then they're watching you in your most intimate, yeah. your most intimate thing you could do is parallel park in front of a woman. I just, I just, oh, this happened years ago. I saw a woman. She was just like, I could see she was like getting embarrassed for this guy who was parallel parking. Okay. She gets out and she's like, you want me to do it? And he's like, no, I got it. I got it. And some dude rolled up on a motorcycle and she just got on and drove off. <laughs> <laughs> I have been parallel parking with a woman in the car and a man came, a pedestrian oh, came and said, may I? That's why I said you're a half man. Give notes on a parallel park to a man oh, with a woman in the, in the thing? That's tough. That's What's worse? A man giving notes to a woman parallel parking or a man giving notes to another man with a woman in the passenger seat? The second one. Never speak to strange men. Yeah, 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 leave it. Leave Never it. help anybody. Leave it. Never help a fellow man no. when the woman leave is there. It. Leave yeah. it. Yeah. Just leave it. Yeah. He'll figure it out or, yeah. or she'll just... Meanwhile, I had it. I, was, I had it. It was back up You'll have I it. How many it. times does it take you? Dude, the last few times, and I, I would tell you the truth, I was able to get the first time. Now, I go for wide spots. This guy takes a long time. He couldn't back out of my driveway yesterday. He didn't, he didn't want to park here today. precarious, man. It's very dangerous. 
Yeah, whatever. Listen, you know what I do now? Screaming, just go. Five minutes of me going, just go. I was, dude, I was fucking so pissed. I was, I was and like, Theo was behind. I was like, I will not close this. Theo was like, what is wrong with it you? It was like a reverse. Producer Theo was embarrassed for you. He was going to get out and back you out and then back himself out. I, no, but Theo knows better not to fucking get out of his car and make another, help another I man. Just, I just knew how, how irritated you were by me watching you. So I kept watching you. It was like a reverse. That's you were what like, friendship is. That's what it is. What is it? You shall not pass. Yeah, it's like you, you shall back <laughs> out. I was like, "Fuck you!" But first of all, it is. Oh, you, L, you're gonna see when you park. Like it is a blind. It's, they call it dead man's curve. Yes, we've had many deaths on the cars. Curve. Go into houses. Yes, we've had many deaths on the curve. But it's a beautiful house. It's a beautiful. You, you know, it's house. a trade off. It's, it's a trade off. Give me a fucking minute to back out of the driveway. I gave you a lot of time. Any real man. You're lucky you didn't have a woman in that car with you. She would have gotten on a motorcycle and just be gone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wait, we were talking about um, how to make new friends. That was the whole theme of the episode. I want to make sure these people have some tips, have some tricks, because you're the expert, and so am I. Well, I think it's fair to say most of your current LA friend group start off as my friends. Ripped rip them from you. Yeah, you them out of your clutches. It's like when you see a, a newborn hatchling crew and you're a hawk and you see there's no way this mother can, can protect all of these chicks. I just swooped in and grabbed two or three. I was like, I'll take these yep. two. One fell out of the nest. Yeah, one fell out. Um, and I realized, and, and I think this is such a good point. You brought it up um, when we were talking off, off stage. The easiest way to make a new friend is through friends of friends. It's the most overlooked. People are like, how do you make a new friend? I don't know. Just hang out with the people your friend brings over and you're, it turns out you probably have a lot in common. You like the same stuff. You're actually, I would say this is funny because like one of our good friends or new friend, I met him and his, his, his wife and my wife are, are get along really well. And like, he and I read the same exact books, like voracious readers, crazy Israeli parents. So we literally were like, do we need Aaron anymore? Yeah. I'm out. He's out. I'm out. He's been usurped. Yeah. And that's fine. I yeah. think a lot of people feel nervous about that. Well, but let me be very clear. This It is a dicey proposition. To usurp. Well, the usurp is, a, is, <laughs> is, a, is an extreme case. But like, you know, you need to know like when you're getting a friend's, friend's cell phone. Like, yeah. You know, some people aren't like you have, you have to be aware, self-aware. Yeah, you, I think there's a couple of things. One is if your friend is sensitive about that. I know you're not. Yes. But if you have a I'm friend like, who's please. sensitive about that, there's a lot of people right. who are sensitive like, you're texting my friend. Yes. Like ter territorial. Yes. Look, I don't think people should be territorial about friends. I think that causes a lot of the problems in making new friends because yeah. if people are territorial that you're with, then like they're basically excluding you from having legitimate, genuine friendships with those friends of friends. Yeah. Like that, th thankfully you're not territorial. Otherwise I would have only really been friends of friends with them. So, uh, one of my best friends, Adam, he's a TV exec. And uh, in 2011, I had a general meeting with him. So in Hollywood speak, if you're a screenwriter, general meeting is you just, it's basically a play date, actually. Yeah, it is a play date. You have a work play date where you meet someone, there's nothing on the agenda just to get to know each other. And I met Adam and we just like hit it off, like fell in love. And five years after that meeting, you and I were groomsmen at his wedding. Unbelievable. And yeah. We've, we weaseled my way in there. Now, the, the thing about Adam, one of his many qualities. Wow. One Greatest of friend friends, you've ever brought to the table. God, is that maybe my superpower? Is that Bringing I, people into the fold. Like, I'm not that great, but I have good friends and I just foist them. Yes. Yeah, but you got to surround yourself with people who are better than or you. Or you could say he is great because of that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that better. Yeah, you're like a CEO who's not that bright, but his skill is, I know I got to put a lot of talent right. around me and I'm going right. to have a great team. Right. So Adam, just to, you know, to be succinct, Adam, one of Adam's superpowers is he's very good at Vegas. He knows everybody, everybody loves him. So if you're with Adam and you're going into a club, it's not even like a red rope, no. what's it called, velvet rope? You're with- You're, you're the VIP, VVIP. He calls it pressing buttons. You're in the DJ booth. Do you know our friend Pat actually pressed buttons? Literally Yeah, you buttons. could literally press buttons in the DJ booth with this guy. It's like, it's very hard to go back to that. Once you've been in Vegas with, with our Adam. friend Adam, yeah. going back, it's like, go, you may as well be in Reno. Yeah. Like Atlantic regular, City. yeah, like regular Vegas without this guy is like going to Reno, going to one of those when you're driving home and you're depressed and you stop to like play a couple slots. That's what regular Vegas feels like when you're not with Adam.
So we were in Vegas before the pandemic with Matt, with, with Adam, and- we For had, a divorce party. Yes, for a divorce party, which I don't know- Is a thing that we want to yes, make happen. If you get divorced in our friend group, you get a reverse bachelor party, which is a divorce party. And we were with Adam. Unfortunately, Adam uh, got ill. He wasn't feeling well, and he had to leave Vegas. And he just said, use my name. So here's the thing. Let me set the stage. When we say he has access, like he gets us into these mega parties inside the DJ booth, but you have to go through like five layers of security and there's somebody escorting you in and you have like five different hand stamps and five different bracelets. And when you come in, it's weirdly very intimate. Yeah, there's like seven people. It's literally just you, yeah. the DJ and his manager. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, this is like too intimate. So, He's like, the DJ's like, no checks? Right. So <laughs> why are these guys here? So... When they were like, when he was like, use my name, we we're like, all right, this is going to, this, this is the end. Like, we're not going to do that. Cause like, they're going to know he, he's not there. And so he, he leaves early in the day on Saturday. And he's friends with these people. And he's friends with these people. Yeah. So me being the crazy person that I am, they all decided that I was literally just going to pretend to be our friend, Adam Kaplan. Literally, they were like, I'm like, what do you mean pretend to be him? You guys were like, you know, just. Be him. Just be him. Yeah, be him. So I was like, if, the, if I'm going to pull this off, I got to go hugely committed. Like, I commit, but this was like Olivier. I yeah. mean, this was, yeah. this was my Othello. Yeah. We're walk I forget who the DJ was, but some famous DJ. And it's like, you know, I said it to a couple of security guards, like, I'm Adam Kaplan. They don't know, you know, but these guys know him. This is his manager. This is his DJ. So I walked in so hot. Arms raised like a falcon. And I was like, hey, it's me, Adam Kaplan. And I brought the DJ in for a huge bear hug. I lifted him off the ground. I pounded the manager. I gave him a kiss on the cheek. I'm like, and these are my boys. You remember these guys? And there's like a pause. And then he was like, looking. yeah, great to see Adam! you. Hey! Hey! And literally all weekend around and around, it went like that the whole weekend. I am Adam Kaplan. Oh, you were Adam Kaplan. I inhabited him. I feel like I, I know him better as a person. He goes, oh, it was so great to see you a few months ago. Uh, it's not the same person. It's a different person. <laughs> Vegas swine. We, we, we don't even look alike. Not even anything alike. Don't act alike. Yeah, I mean, we're both like white dudes. That's it. Oh, Unbelievable. What a moment. Uh, Adam Kaplan. Love great, great, great addition to the friend crew. So one thing a lot of people say to us, man, is like, we have a big friend group. Our, our Man of the Year group is nine, but like our actual LA group is like a couple, I mean, it's pretty big. It's a lot. Especially a lot. for me, I host parties. I'm always like, who do I invite for a dinner Matt party? Matt fucking Gatsby. I host parties. Yeah, you have people over your backyard. I mean, you could call me I Gatsby mean, there Light. Was, you could call me Gatsby there Light. There were people dancing to. in the pool. Whatever is it, what is that called? A, a synchronized swim team at my last pool party. They were former French national synchronized swimmers. Really? Yeah, really. I, I, I have I their it. info. You know, you know, that's a great moment. I didn't go to your Halloween party because oh. I said, listen, I've been to his house. I know all those people. I'm going to branch out and go with a different group to a different thing. W worst worst mistake. Ever. Why, worst why? mistake ever. Stick with why? what's working, kid. I know, but isn't that going the opposite against our No, eyes? I know, but at Halloween, okay. I had so many new people. Yeah. We already had the new people. Oh, so how many, how many people is the right number for Frank Cruz? Is that what you're asking? Well, I also think, first of all- I For going out. For going out, you have to have more than two. I agree. Oh, I hate when it's just me and you. Yeah. God, we run out of things to talk about real quick. It's literally like, no, but it's also just the looking in the eyes. 15 minutes in, you're like, how's your mom? I'm like, okay. Like, you, my mom's fine. Like, grandma's mom's still alive? Yeah. Who else? I don't know. Yeah. Didn't, didn't you have that cousin? You know, once you're getting into like cousins. But then when you need the third person, it's great. It's exponential. Uh, what a dynamic. Oh God, you could go to the bathroom and they're there. It's great. I love going to watch uh, basketball or football with three guys. Yeah, anything that can fit in an Uber is good. So that's four, I guess, XL. You're saying XL is too much if there's six and you have oh. to do like, I don't like, I'll tell you what I don't like. Oh, the backseat thing. Oh, love the backseat of an Uber XL. Oh God, are you that's trapped? Like my, that's, that's like a, it's literally prison. I know, but like everyone has to have their like role in the group. That's why I I'm, like you. I'm compact. Oh, I love, I love I your size. I offer, I raise my hand and I say, I'll sit, bitch. I love your third row size. I mean, you have a lot of good attributes. But yeah. When I'm thinking about going out, it's like, oh, thank God, he's got the third row, yes. or he's got the middle. Yes. I, like, I will stop people. Go, no, no, no. I got, this. I got, bitch. I'll take it. Now, what a good friend quality. So you're saying three to three to five is is the right number. Well, we'll say when we were in Vegas, you got a, you got some sort of Uber XL XL 
which had like 10 people. Yeah, we had too many. But that was a, that was way out of the- I think I gave the guy $100 out, out of pocket. It wasn't oh, even on the you, Uber app. You, yeah. No, it was 150 out of pocket. Yeah, I'm saying it wasn't oh, on yeah. the app. Oh no, that guy was- Oh like, yeah, no, he was That like, guy, he yeah, would take that, it. That was, he was like, Uber would fire me and I would go to jail for doing this, but do you have $150? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I ne- he goes, I never do I never, this. Oh, yeah, I never. I never. Oh, I've never uh, done this. Uh, I never do this. Yeah. This is the only one, this is the first time. It's because you're so charming. Yeah, but- <laughs> This never happened to me before. This never happened. Yeah. Okay, I swear to God. Uh, but I think that, you know, our, sort of like a, as a final thought, um, we have a buddy um, who talks about getting off zero, which is like, in, he was talking about investing in crypto. Poco, shout out to Poco. Yeah, shout out to Poco. But get off zero, I just have, have uh, co-opted it for my whole life, which is do something. Great. Do anything. It's great. I always, I say to my wife when we don't have cupcakes now, so I go, get off zero. <laughs> But like, even if it's literally going grocery shopping, if you usually do Instacart or taking a meeting IRL or just like going for a walk, just getting yourself out there, you're not meeting anybody or make, trying to make friends, but you're doing something. I like this. So th- we're, this is our call to action for you guys. Yes, if you are looking to make new friends, try to do something the next week that puts you in a position where you might meet someone and that person may know someone who becomes your friend. Right. How about this? You know, if you're going to meet a friend, like say, hey, what are you doing this week? If they say they're going to do something with their friend, be like, can I come? Yeah. I think people think that when you don't like when people invite themselves, I invite myself totally all the time. Totally. All totally time. into it. I like that. Get off to your this week. Do one thing, one minor thing outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. And we'd love to hear stories of how you met your friend group or friend fails. We're oh yeah, yeah. I like friend fails. Friend fail. We 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 we've been there. We'll share we had a couple. Podcast. We had a couple friend fails like in LA. That you know when you move to LA, you meet a lot of weird people that you think are going to be your friends. On well, some other future episode, we'll yeah. talk about some friend yeah. fails. But send us our your friend fails. We're on social, Instagram, TikTok, Man of the Year podcast. Like and subscribe to our podcast. Do not make us beg. Leave a review. Uh, do five stars. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And be good to yourself and be good to your friends. Be good to yourself and be good to your friends. I like it. Yes. I love you, buddy. Love you too. Bye, guys.